If we could see our own galaxy in a distant aerial view, it would look something like this impressive spiral. But galaxies come in other styles, too. This shapeless scattering of stars is a dwarf galaxy, little more than a loose star cluster. Two small galaxies called the Magellanic Clouds accompany our own galaxy, and this is the larger of them. This small spiral seems to have been pulled out of shape by the gravity of a passing galaxy. Some spiral galaxies have a straight bar of stars and gas across their centers. Pink clouds in the arms of spiral galaxies are clouds of hydrogen gas called nebulae from which new stars are born. Here in close-up are fields of bright nebulae in our own galaxy. These dark streaks are clouds of cold gas and dust seen in silhouette against the brighter gas, which is lit up by the hot young stars born within it. Other types of nebulae mark the end points in a star's life. Here are the remains of a star that ripped itself to pieces in a supernova explosion in the constellation Cygnus. This dying star lost its outer layers in a celestial smoke ring that surrounds it like a wreath on a grave. This family of hot, young stars, called the Pleiades, or Seven Sisters, is still surrounded by traces of the nebulae from which they formed. Within this foggy nebulae lies Antares, the brightest star in the constellation Scorpius, the Scorpion. Antares is the type of star known as a red supergiant, a bloated sphere of gas 400 times the diameter of the sun and 10,000 times as brilliant. This is how it might look from close up. Stars are gigantic nuclear reactors, turning hydrogen into helium at their centers, and it's the energy released in this process that makes them shine. Like all stars, Antares began its life when a cloud of gas and dust shrank and heated up and began to glow. A star as massive as Antares would at first have been hot and blue, like the stars in the Pleiades cluster.
Then, as the star got older, it would swell up and turn red, as we see it today. Eventually, when it has used up all the fuel at its center, it will explode as a brilliant supernova, scattering its outer layers into space, but possibly leaving behind a tiny, fast-spinning core known as a pulsar. With as much mass as our sun squashed into a ball smaller than a city. A pulsar gives out flashes of radio waves every time it spins, like a celestial lighthouse. But sometimes, if the star's remaining core is heavy enough, it will shrink down into something far smaller and denser than even a pulsar, a black hole. Black holes are drain plugs in space from which nothing can escape, not even light. However, gas can be drawn in to the otherwise invisible region. Some black holes orbit around normal stars. Here, gas is torn off the visible star and flows towards the black hole. As it plunges towards the hole, it heats up to millions of degrees and emits X-rays, which can be detected by satellites in space. Most stars are not single, like our sun, but come in families, like this pair of stars, orbiting around their common center of gravity. In this example, a normal star is orbited by a small white dwarf. Gas from the larger companion overflows onto the white dwarf, where it builds up and explodes from time to time, producing what's called a nova. The whole process can repeat itself many times. Dark dust clouds like this prevent us from seeing to the center of our galaxy. With the naked eye, we can see a few thousand stars and five bright planets, including the brightest of them all, Venus, seen at center right. In the southern hemisphere, we can also see two nearby galaxies called the Magellanic Clouds at lower left and at top right. The most distant object visible to the naked eye is the great spiral galaxy in Andromeda, over two million light years away. 